start by, by thanking the heroic service of the men and women who, who serve alongside you. Uh, we are approaching a solemn anniversary this week, uh, and it is an anniversary of a violent terrorist attack on the Capitol where we saw the men and women of law enforcement demonstrate incredible courage, incredible bravery, uh, risk their lives uh, to defend the men and women who serve in this Capitol. We are grateful for that courage. We appreciate uh, the selfless sacrifice uh, of the men and women who, who keep us safe. And, and I will say, my view is that anyone who commits an act, act of violence should be prosecuted. And anyone who assaults a law enforcement officer should go to jail for a very long time. And I think that's a principle that is true regardless of the politics of the violent criminal, whether they are right wing, left wing, or they got no wings at all. If you assault a cop, you ought to go to jail for a long, long time. Uh, and I hope we get some agreement that that should be true regardless of the political context uh, that ostensibly and purportedly justifies that violence, that, that we will stand with the men and women of blue. So I thank you for your service. I thank, thank the men and women who serve with you for their service. Thank you. As we reflect on what happened a year ago, uh, it is also worth asking, as, as we have, as this committee has, as Congress has, as I know you have, uh, what could have been done differently? What could have prevented the breach of the Capitol? What could have prevented uh, the, the riot getting as far as it did? Uh, and, and, and so let me just start with, with, with that question. With the benefit of hindsight, uh, what could have been done to better secure the Capitol uh, to stop the riot outside and prevent them from, from penetrating as far as they did? So I think that um, clearly documented intelligence failures. Um, there were leadership failures um, within the Capitol Police Department. Um, if folks had, uh, if, if, if the intelligence had been acted on the way it, it should have been, um, and we would have had enough people here, um, I think it would have been a different story. And that one of the things that we have, uh, one of the changes that we put into place is that um, with uh, a, a few phone calls, I can get uh, double or triple the number of police officers we have trained, uh, uh, equipped police officers here to assist us uh, in our responsibilities to protect uh, the Capitol and protect the members of Congress. So, um, you know, as, as uh, and we will be tested again, Senator. I mean, I, it, I, and I don't know who it's going to be or when it's going to be, but w we will likely be tested again. But what will be different is that we will be um, uh, paying much more attention to the information that w we gather ahead of time. We will be putting a, together a better plan. We will be getting the help that we need pre-planned here on campus um, before we need it, not making panicked calls later on. And, I'm, and I say that and not in any way criticize um, the folks that were here on the 6th. They had a very difficult challenge. And uh, I, I'm the la I, and I frankly have not been looking behind me. I'm looking forward about what we need to do to make the changes. But clearly, when you look at the recommendations, when you look at what happened, we, were, uh, we didn't have the uh, people, we, we didn't act on the intelligence, and we just weren't prepared the way we should have been. And that, that's going to change. That has changed. And, um, and the next time that we're tested, um, uh, we will not be making those same mistakes. Well, and, and let me say one of the things we've seen the last two years is, is a dramatic increase in threats directed at lawmakers. Uh, and, and those threats are, are bipartisan. They're directed at Republicans and Democrats. The chairwoman and I have discussed this at, at length. And, and let me say the Capitol Police does a, a tremendous job uh, working to deal with those threats and, and, and working to, to keep us safe. We are grateful for that. Um, the two areas you identified for improvement were intelligence gathering and manpower. Uh, on the manpower side, you talked about the ability to surge additional resources. What, what are the, the sources of those additional officers to surge on the manpower side? And then let me ask secondly, on the intelligence side, what more did we, do we need to do on the front end 
to anticipate the specific threats that we need to be ready for. So in terms of, of um, surging uh, staffing here, um, we've got federal partners, we've got state and local partners, we've got the National Guard, um, all, of, all of whom uh, we have uh, coordinated with uh, since the 6th, all of whom we have sat down and said, okay, when we need help, here's how we're going to do it. One of the things, and I thank the, um, all, uh, um, the, both the Senate and the House for uh, passing the supplemental, we have uh, included in there was um, uh, funding so that if we asked for um, state and local help, and at one point for one event we had uh, an additional 400, 500 police officers, trained civil disturbance unit police officers here um, to, to uh, enhance our capability. We were able to um, offset the expenses from those partners so that when we make the request, we're going to get a yes. Um, Metropolitan Police Department and Chief Conti could not be, we couldn't find a better partner um, than the MPD. Uh, I speak with the chief fairly frequently. Um, he, uh, and anything that we need um, is, again, the answer is yes from MPD. But we, we know we need to talk ahead of time to plan, plan for these things, which takes, takes to your second question about the intelligence and what we're doing on the front end. Um, we did not, um, we, pr prior to the 6th, we were not sharing information the way we should be, and we were not disseminating it to our own people the way we should be. And we, the only, um, intelligence is only useful if you, if you act on it. Um, when you get intelligence, you need, to, you need to say, okay, how does this impact our operational plan. What are we going to do? We know, we've hear, heard this. We have this intelligence. We believe it's credible. What are we going to do about it? So um, th those, are, those are changes w that we have made and put into place so that we are sharing it, we're acting on it, we're using it, we're, uh, and we're disseminating it to our, to our own officers. So, um, I, you know, I, we, we're going to get tested again, and, uh, but we have put things into place to make sure that it, we will not be impacted by intelligence failures or failure to plan ahead, failure to imagine, or failure to um, have enough people here. Those are things that we've put into place that um, I'm confident that uh, it, when we're tested again, we're going to be fine. Thank you, Chief. Uh Thank you very much, uh, Senator Cruz. Thanks for the focus on member security and 